Welcome to the broadcast, friend. It is Tuesday, July 16th, and we are traveling down Interstate 40, going from city to city in North Carolina. We were just in Asheville, did an interview with the ABC affiliate there. I'm gonna play that clip. And then we're gonna show you some of our footage from Winston-Salem. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Welcome to the program, friend. I heard a great sermon on Sunday about loving your neighbor as yourself, the parable of the Good Samaritan. And I've been thinking a lot about it. it you know, think with me. The priest and the Levite passed by on the other side of the road. We, we know this. They were, pre they were prepared to let the man die. The Samaritan, however, is the one who rescued him. The Samaritan poured in oil and wine. The Samaritan picked him up and out of his own pocket paid for him to be nursed back to health at the inn. The Samaritan took risks. For all he knew, the robbers were still lingering in the shadows. The Samaritan put the, the well-being of the man lying in the ditch, put his well-being ahead of his own time, his schedule, his convenience, his comfort. That's what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. When your neighbor is in trouble, or literally when your neighbor is on death's door, you do something, you sacrifice. And as I've looked at this landscape, well, let me back up a little bit. We, we just went to Asheville. Let me, let's show you some of the footage. We have this coach. So we're driving the coach around the block over and over at City Hall, preaching to people. My sons and one of our good friends standing there on the sidewalk, standing with their signs, speaking to people as they walk by. Our cameraman filming all of this. <clears throat> we have people screaming at us, yelling at us, giving us the finger. Asheville is a Democrat stronghold. And these are people that are being vile and angry and hateful because they embrace the murder of babies. It's so crazy. It's so beyond comprehension <clears throat> that we have come to the place as a culture where people are cheering when they pass a bill that you can kill a baby up to the day of birth. This is literally from hell. This is satanic. It's demonic but it's happening before our eyes. Our duty as Christians is to stand for these babies like the Good Samaritan helped the man dying in the ditch. Our duty is to try and save their lives, to speak out for them, to sacrifice, to be inconvenienced. But sadly, most Christians who vote Democrat care so little about babies' lives that they are literally willing to vote people into office who have sworn to kill these babies. I, I can't get my head around it. I literally cannot get my head around that level of betrayal, callousness, unfeeling, merciless treachery. I just can't think of any other word to describe it. So, we're going to take you on this kaleidoscope journey. First thing we want to show you is a clip of our cameraman filming me while the ABC affiliate in Asheville is doing an interview with me. So you get to see us in action. Those guys behind me are some of my sons. I'm so proud of them being on this trip. This is the message, people. This is the message. Here it is. The simplest way for people to see everything we're doing is randallterry.com. I'm the founder of I'm the founder of Operation Rescue. I'm a pro life activist. Pro life activist. Yes. Okay. Very good. And so, why are you in Asheville today? Asheville is one of the strongholds of the Democrat Party in North Carolina. There are a lot of Christians here who still vote Democrat, and our message to them is: if you vote for Democrat candidates, you have blood on your hands. 
The Democrat candidates are all promoting abortion up until the day of birth for any reason. This is unthinkable. Can you imagine if Harry Truman had stood up and said, we're going to want to kill one third of your babies by abortion and we're going to want homosexual marriage? It would have been viewed as insanity. And yet that is what the Democrat Party has become. The party of the merchants of death and of homosexual marriage. To stay in a party that is committing crimes against God is to have blood on one's hands. We must overturn Roe versus Wade. That means President Trump has to win re-election so he can put pro-life judges on the court. That means he must win North Carolina. President Trump must win North Carolina to beat, repeat. President Trump must win North Carolina to remain as president and to keep appointing pro-life judges who will overturn Roe versus Wade. We are calling on Christians to put the lives of babies first which means you can't vote for somebody who promotes the murder of innocent babies. Very good. Um, that's all the questions I have. Does that, does that cover? I think it covers it. So there you have it. Now, we went from reaching a few score of people, maybe a few hundred of people passing by in their cars, to reaching tens of thousands of people through the television broadcast at the ABC affiliate in Asheville. That's why we do what we do. We're being seen by millions of people. If you, if you accumulate our trips to New York and Philadelphia and all over Iowa and Pennsylvania and Dallas, if you accumulate these, tens of millions of people have seen or heard us prophesying the truth for babies and for the law of God. You, we couldn't buy this type of advertisement. We couldn't pay for our message to be heard like it's been read and seen in newspapers. But it still takes money. So maybe you can't travel on the road with us, but you could buy us a tank of gas. You could buy a meal. Right? Thank you, sir. God bless you. Last night we took everyone to a buffet. It was $110.21. That included the food, the tax, and the tip. $110 to feed seven of us on this coach. Boys, wave. Wave to the camera. So we're here on the coach. It takes money to feed them. God bless. One of our team members paid for a hotel for two guys. Me and my four boys, we slept in the coach last night to save money, but it still costs money. If you believe in what we're doing, I'm asking you, please, go to my website when this program is over and make a contribution. Buy us a tank of gas. Buy us a meal. Please. One other thing, when you go to the website, we just released the rough version of a song. <laughs> I'll tell you more about it when we come back. You go to randallterry.com. I promise you, you are going to laugh out loud. I'll tell you about it when we return from this break. Don't go away. Introducing Roxy Guitar. If you're a guitar or bass player, whether you play acoustic or electric, check out Roxy Guitar. I've been playing for over 40 years and seen guitar stores all over America. I've never seen a store like Roxy Guitar. Roxy Guitar has over 700 guitars in stock, over 1,500 pedals, over 200 amps. For the beginner or price conscious buyer, there's Michael Kelly guitars. For the serious player or professional, Roxy Guitar has the finest selection of guitar lines I've ever seen. You know I love Warrior guitars. Roxy Guitar has over 100 Warriors in stock. They have Heritage. GNL, Gretsch, John Sears, BC Rich, Duesenberg, Dean, legendary guitars at great prices, including pre owned Gibsons, Fenders, and more. Let them know you heard about Roxy Guitar from Randall Terry and receive 10% or more off your purchase on select items. Go to RoxyGuitar.com. Welcome back, friend. All right, so why are we in North Carolina? We're here to go to Democrat strongholds and to say to people, you cannot vote Democrat. And we're here to show support for President Trump. 
because tomorrow on the 17th, he's having a rally in Greenville, North Carolina, because of Robert Mueller testifying before Congress. So we're going to stand with the president and sing a song. Now, I got to tell you, I'm going to get to the president's tweets and whether or not they're racist, but stay with me, please. If you've ever been to a Trump rally, which we have, inside the, the rally, as far as I know, every time, if, at one moment or another, when he points out the lying fake news, people will break into a chant over and over. They'll either yell fake news, fake news, or more often now, they'll be yelling, CNN sucks, CNN sucks, which I know is a little bit crude and crass to some people, but in, today, in today's genre, in today's uh, vocabulary, it just means that they're rotten, they stink, okay? There's nothing un, unwholesome or a dirty about it. So this chant goes on over and over and over. And Jim Acosta, who travels with the president, on two separate occasions, the CNN reporter, Jim Acosta, (laughs) has quoted the crowd. So we've got him on tape saying CNN sucks. They're out there saying fake news and go home and CNN sucks. (laughs) So we decided to put it to a song. If you want to laugh, go to the website, randallterry.com, and we're going to actually play that song outside of Trump's rally in North Carolina tomorrow. My sons are going to play it. So anyway, back to President Trump and his tweets. I'm going to read to you the tweets right now, okay? We're going to put them up on the screen and you can see for yourself what the president said. Here it is. So interesting to see progressive Democrat congresswomen who originally came from countries whose governments are a complete and total catastrophe the worst, most corrupt and inept in the, anywhere in the world, if they even have a functioning government at all, now loudly and viciously tell the people of the United States, the greatest and most powerful nation on earth, how our government is to be run. Why don't they go back and help fix the totally broken and crime infested places from which they came? Then come back and show us how it's done. These places need your help badly. You can't leave fast enough. I'm sure that Nancy Pelosi would be very happy to quickly work out the free travel arrangements. Okay, can anyone tell me anything about that that's racist? Where where was race mentioned? I never heard it mentioned mentioned race. One of them I think is born uh, in another country. The others are, I believe, the children of immigrants. Don't quote me on that. But the, the point, the message is, look, if you think it's so bad here, and go back where you're from, fix it, then come back and show us how it's done. What in heaven's name could possibly be racist about that? Now, Joni Ernst from Iowa, U.S. Senator, Republican, usually has her head screwed on straight. Someone stuck a microphone in front of her. I don't know if she had read the president's tweets or not. A lot of times these people are ambushed in the halls by a reporter and they don't want to look bad to their constituents back home. Was President Trump's streets way racist? Oh yeah, I suppose. What is racist about that? Ilhan Omar, this Muslim radical, this woman who hates Israel, hates Christianity. Trust me, she hates true Christianity because Christianity says that Muhammad, the founder of Islam, was a false prophet and that he was a killer and that he was a slave trader. So she hates Christianity, trust me, people. She hates Judaism, she hates hates Jews. Go home, go back, Ilhan Omar, if it's so bad. How is that racist? I don't care what color her skin is. I don't care where these people are from. It doesn't matter if they're from Italy, Europe, Africa, the Middle East, the Far East, South America. If you think it's so bad here, then just get the hell out, just go. Go, go to your country, show us how great you can make it and how, you know, juxtapose the country of your origin or your parents' origin with America. And then show us how it's done over there. Rather than come here to the freest nation on earth, what, what, what used to be the greatest nation on earth, we're getting in a little bit of trouble right now, but, but I digress. So we're going to show support of President Trump. That's why we're here in North Carolina. President Trump's tweet was not racist. 
under any circumstance. And to say it just shows that the left-wing media can't focus on the words. Just we'll look at the words. Yeah, that's actually a good point. If it's so bad here, go home or go to where your ancestors are from. Thank you. God bless you. We do get a lot of thumbs up. Total stranger at the last rest stop came up to us, thanked us for our work, gave us $20 to help pay for gas and food. Thank you, sir. I'll be right back, friends. Don't go away. I also want to speak tonight directly to Muslims throughout the world. We respect your faith. His teachings are good and peaceful. And those who commit evil in the name of Allah blaspheme the name of Allah. We have reaffirmed again and again that the United States is not and never will be at war with Islam. Islam teaches peace. Islam is a religion of peace. They are not Muslims, they are monsters. We've been told that Muslim terrorists have hijacked the peaceful religion of Islam. But Islamic art and literature tell a very different story. To know the truth, we only have to study the narrative of the founder of Islam, Muhammad, in his own words. Welcome to the program, friend. We are in front of the City Hall in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I have on my microphone so that the coach can be heard by people, and I also have the microphone for the camera. This is a Democrat mayor who's here. People are walking by, we're talking to them as they go. But the simple reality is that the Democrat Party has taken upon itself to drive out of federal politics, national politics, to drive out every recollection of Senator Casey from Pennsylvania. Some of you are too young to know, but the Democrat Party used to be a mixture of pro-life and pro-abortion. Andrew Cuomo, Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, they have taken it upon themselves to literally drive out everyone who is pro-life. They do not want anyone who is a player in the Democrat Party to say that it is wrong to kill a baby by abortion. They are maniacally, demonically inspired to commit and to continue, to commit to and to continue the shedding of innocent blood. And by the way, good sir, thank you for listening. 12% of the African American population, 12% of America is African American, 12%. One third of all babies aborted are black. There is a disproportionate number of babies who are black who are being killed because Planned Parenthood and the founders of Planned Parenthood and Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, they wanted to eliminate what they called human weeds. They called black people, they called Irish and Italian Catholics, human weeds. They wanted white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. That's what they wanted. That's what Margaret Sanger wanted. So when you think today of where Planned Parenthood is putting these abortion mills, they're putting them in low income, low income African American communities. It's on purpose. It's a black genocide. One out of every two babies conceived in Washington, D.C. ends up in a garbage dump or a landfill. More than half of the babies conceived, who are black babies in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, more than half of them are aborted. It's black genocide, people. But beyond black genocide, it's just flat out murder. It's a holocaust. And the Democrat Party has embraced that they have embraced an offense against marriage, so-called homosexual marriage. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah. Where's my remember Sodom and Gomorrah sign? That's what I should be holding. Listen, God sees, God hears from his heaven. Ladies, 
What you're seeing on this coach, this is abortion. This is the Democrat party. This is what the party has become. The party of death. And when you vote for a candidate who says that they're gonna continue a woman's right to choose, you have blood on your hands. You, ma'am, if you vote for someone who promotes the murder of babies, then you share in the guilt of that crime. We are obligated. And you know, I'm gonna say one other thing before we take a break. John Brown is a historic figure in America because he wanted to arm the slaves to fight for freedom. He was willing to give them guns, knowing full well that they would kill their slave masters and that they would flee and try and become free using force, using lethal force. David Walker, African-American man from Boston, he talked about civil war coming. He predicted the civil war 30 years before it happened. I believe with all my heart it would have been morally just for African-American slaves to fight, physically fight for their freedom. The only reason that this godless Holocaust, this damnable Holocaust has continued for nearly 40 years now, the only reason, or over 40 years, is because babies can't pick up weapons, because babies can't defend themselves, because babies can't run away, because babies can't cry out for help, because babies can't say, look at me, look at me, I'm a baby, please don't kill me, because it's going on in the secret corners of America. That's why this Holocaust continues, people. And it's our job, since the babies don't have a voice, they can't run, they can't defend themselves, they can't fight, there's nothing they can do. It's up to us to put their lives ahead of our comfort and ahead of our loyalty to a party, including the Democrat Party or the Republican Party for that matter. We must vote for people who will bring an end to this Holocaust. We've got to take a break. I'll be back, Randall Terry from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, with our team, including my courageous sons. High five, buddy. <laughs> what would Mohammed do? Islamic Terrorism Explained is the best movie series documentary ever produced on the life of Mohammed and Islam. How do I know? Because it's what critics are saying. John Moore, radio host and author said, I learned more from what would Mohammed do about Islam and Islamic terrorism than I've learned from everything I ever read and watched in my entire life. Best-selling author, Dr. Bill Warner said, what would Mohammed do is the best movie series, TV production on the life of Mohammed and Islamic terrorism that has ever been produced. Friends, this is what the experts are saying. No one has ever done what we've done. I encourage you to get one, two, four copies. Call 304-289-3700. That's 304-289-3700. Or order it at the address or the website that you see on the screen. Introducing Roxy Guitar. If you're a guitar or bass player, whether you play acoustic or electric, check out Roxy Guitar. I've been playing for over 40 years and seen guitar stores all over America. I've never seen a store like Roxy Guitar. Roxy Guitar has over 700 guitars in stock, over 1,500 pedals, over 200 amps. For the beginner or price conscious buyer, there's Michael Kelly guitars. For the serious player or professional, Roxy Guitar has the finest selection of guitar lines I've ever seen. You know I love Warrior guitars. Roxy Guitar has over 100 Warriors in stock. They have heritage. G&L, Gretsch, John Sears, BC Rich, Duesenberg, Dean, legendary guitars at great prices, including pre-owned Gibsons, Fenders, and more. Let them know you heard about Roxy Guitar from Randall Terry and receive 10% or more off your purchase on select items. Go to RoxyGuitar.com. Where does the time go? We will be going to the Trump rally tomorrow. On Thursday's show, we will show you the footage of what we did there. I'm asking you to pray for us. In fact, let me misquote Lee Iacocca. If you can find a better car, buy it. 
If you can find better activists, support them. There are some better activists out there, I know that, but there's not many. We're part of a, an elite group of fighting men and women who stand for the truth. If you believe in what we're doing, please go to the website and make a contribution. Please, we need help, just for food and gas. God bless you.